Connect to the grenade. Big damage, big damage, big damage. He's dead. There you go. We have another archer right here on the right side. Heal me, heal me, thank you. Hey. How's it going boys and we're back at it again with another video another pvp guy this one y'all been asking for it it is the fire stab and musket i know super weird weapon combination but we have been making it work flawlessly oh my god it's a beautiful great sustain great burst great mobility uh somewhat good cc you know what let me just show you guys all i know is that i've been having such a great freaking time with this build and everybody that has been watching uh, watching me play this build, it, it, they say, Trick, this build looks so freaking fun. When is this build going to be in New World Champ? Well, worry not because it is already in New World Champ. And as a matter of fact, we're going to be jumping into New World Champ right now to take a look at the gear. Here we are in New World Champ. And for the build, we're going to go to PvP builds. We're going to go to Magical. We're going to go to Fire Staff and look for Fire Bullets. There it is. This is the bill that we'll be talking about and showcasing today. And we're going to go with 350 intelligence, 150 dexterity, and 100 constitution. The reason why we're going 350 intelligence and not dexterity is because since we're using fire staff as our other weapon, we wanted to do as much damage as we possibly can. If we go full dexterity and a little bit of intelligence, then the fire staff will not do pretty much any damage at all plus the musket skills very nicely with the intelligence and on top of that the 350 intelligence that you deal more damage with your ability it goes great with this build because the traps the splitting grenades i mean just the sticky grenade flamethrower fireball you know you, you you name it for the artifacts on the weapon we're going to be using the mechanic a hundred percent we're going to be using the mechanic we're going to be putting flame attunement on the mechanic uh, the mechanic comes from the toy maker if you guys don't know who that is uh we're going to put a ruby ignited gem on the mechanic as well on the accessory we're going to be using the endless thirst we're going to be putting nimble on it endless thirst is getting buff in season four this build is somewhat low constitution so with the brand new potions that we're getting which are 20 percent stronger Together, we're going to be running Alchemist Reprieve. I'm going to get to the to the amulet in a second, but um, but it just synergizes very well. And for the gear, the artifact that we're going to be using are going to be the wing leather shoes. These are coming in Season 4, and I call these the Speedy Shoes. But anyways, here we go. Let's just go ahead and start. For the helmet, we're going to go with Fire Harnessing, Freedom, and Refreshing. The reason we're going with Fire Harnessing is because we want to do as much damage as we possibly can with everything this is a damaging pure damaging bill right the freedom the reason why we're gonna be going with freedom is because we're low con and the pants already have freedom in them so let's go ahead and go for another three freedom in there get those full max freedom that way the net shot slow gets uh you know we get rid of that rather quickly the cc the stuns uh the scream the vines you don't want to get stuck in place for too long with this bill Plus, this build has crazy mobility. The one thing that you don't want to be having with this build is any slows. And Freedom will help you will help you with that. And refreshing because, well, this build not only, it, you know, it utilizes the basic attacks of the musket. But most of this build's damage actually come from abilities, right? Uh, the powder burn damage, the sticky grenades, the trap, and the fireball together with burnout. Burnout for the skate. Fireball is just a very nice and sustainable. Very good sustained damage. On the gear, we're going to be going with Opal and Ignited. Of course, Ignited that extra 2% fire damage. So we're going to go with a fire harnessing in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 pieces for an extra 10% 10, 10 increased fire damage. We're going to go with Ignited on every single armor as well for an extra 10% fire damage. Bringing it to a grand total of 20% increased fire damage together with a ring which is at 7.1%, this brings it to 20, uh, 27%, 27 fire damage, which is crazy because this build is all around fire damage and explosions. So fire harnessing, freedom refreshing, 
crippling powder burn this is the only weapon perk that we need on the gear really we don't need any other fire staff perk and the uh the musket has already two perks on the musket so you don't have to worry about that so crippling powder burn fire harness and refreshing fire harness and freedom refreshing fire harness and freedom and shirking energy so we have one two three four refreshing one two and three and four freedom we're going to be using shirking energies on the pants of course because you know how great and powerful that is for the light class and now let's talk about the speedy shoes why are the speedy shoes the thing that we have decided to use with this build well the reason why is because you guys know that the traps give you a 33 percent movement speed increase on top of that the musket roll gives you 10 percent movement increase right movement speed increase by having alacrity on the amulet it takes this 33 percent on a um on a five second duration it takes it to like seven and a half seconds and with the speedy boots it takes it look like beyond 10 seconds and that thing is crazy basically running at 50 percent all the time you have an off time of 50 percent movement and speed one pre pretty much a hundred percent of the entire fight of course as long as you don't waste all of your traps and understandable you're going to be using your traps back to back sometime whenever you're playing offensively but if you're playing it defensively all you have to do is put one trap down do a roll get the movement and speed from the roll get the movement and speed from the trap which is 50 percent almost 50 percent movement and speed if you have the severe case from opr all of those things stacks right so you get insane movement and speed and that movement and speed will last you like 10 odd seconds imagine 10 seconds running 40 50 percent movement speed nobody will be ever able to catch you with this spill and since you have two traps even better and your traps cooldowns are reduced by 25 percent thanks to the mechanic and on top of that we're going to be having one two three and four refreshing it is crazy the amount of traps and sticky grenades and fireball that you can send with the bill it's so freaking fun we don't even need a horse in opr you can simply put a trap down. If you had the Sefi Cakes and you put a trap down, you would just go at the speed of life, boys. So that is why I'm recommending the wing leather shoes. If you guys don't want the super speedy boots, then you guys want a more safer approach. You can always go with the feather weight and that way put uh, two, he two heavy pieces of armors on your gear. I don't know if uh, I don't I don't remember exactly what were the perks of the Fire Lord uh, said, but maybe you can slap one of those uh, or two of those in there because we do have a lot of wiggle room with the magnify because we're running 350 int, 150 dexterity, meaning that we can run uh, five uh, five uh, magnifications. Right now we're running one, two, three, and four, meaning that you can run another magnifier on your gear no problem at all maybe you can even run a six one in there just go ahead and give it a try anyways for the mechanic i already covered it we're gonna go with flame attunement the sticky bomb is great accelerating trap is great i know that some people might be saying trick are you crazy why don't you just go for the purple freaking musket that has scribbling powder burn like kingly jacket and stuff i understand it that musket is good but that musket is good if you just mostly want to do basic attacks with your musket play the rat bill the mechanic is for the mechanical players, the people that want to fight face to face with the enemy, the people that want to fight at the sticky grenade and the trap range, which in my opinion, it is so much fun. It's the most fun I've ever had with musket ever before. And honestly, I've been having so much fun and not only fun, but so much success in arenas, OPR and open world with this bill that chat is always going like, Drake, what the hell? This bill is way better than what it should be like this is so good and it is it is great it is amazing it's beautiful the self-sustain oh my god i could go on and on i could go on and on for the fire staff the one that i'm recommending is empower and fireball electricious punishment and play crits play crits is gonna come in clutch because when they, whenever you're playing arenas and they have like a healer or they're clumping up you can throw a, a, a sticky grenade from the mechanic then swap to the fire staff throw a fireball and flamethrower and while you're doing the flamethrower and the fireball landed the sticky grenade is also going to land do an insane amount of burst damage and on top of that you're going to be flaming the enemy with a flamethrower applying anti-heals if anybody has a haste 20 percent increased damage 
If they're above 50% health, 62% in power and fireball. It's so freaking good. This build is beautiful in clumps, in single target. I recommend it. Uh, for the amulet right here, I'm using a Deep River amulet that comes with Alchemist Reprieve. Uh, this one, it's pretty cheap. It's pretty easy to get from pirates. Um, now, I will recommend that instead of going for Alchemist Reprieve, you guys will actually go for Divine. The reason why I recommend in Divine is because Divine actually increases the amount of health you get from also uh, life stealing, not just potions, right? Alchemist Reprieve is only potion, but Divine is not only potion, but it's also life steal, and it is also heals from a healer if you were to have one on your team. The reason I'm recommending the river is because it's free, it's cheap to obtain, but if you can get one with divine alacrity and health, then go for it. Now, I understand that I don't have a stamina recovery here, which is freaking crazy, right? But uh, if you're in a situation where the traps uh, are not enough to get you out of that, uh, stamina recovery might come in, might come in clutch. If you guys want to utilize stamina recovery instead of alchemist reprieve, then go for it. That's probably what I am going to end up using anyways, because people focus me all the time. So uh, stamina recovery, alacrity, health. If you feel like you're getting focused, if you feel like you're getting just shot from afar, all the musket fire stab and stuff like that, then going for uh, Divine, Alacrity, Health, it will, it will be more helpful because with the potions and stuff like that. And I understand you will be close to the enemy, but the beauty of this build is that I want you to be close enough so you can hit them with the trap and the sticky bombs and the flamethrower and the fireball, but not close enough that you're getting gangbang and get hit by, by the clumps, right? Because remember, we're going 100 constitutions, so you're not in a place where you 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 know you can end up trading with the enemy that is not the idea the idea is play close enough to the enemy i'll play them i'll damage them utilizing your kid but not taking as much damage for the ring we're gonna go for the champion's ring fire damage and hardy pretty mandatory invigorated punishment why well because uh we're doing a bunch of ability damage right flamethrower fireball uh a sticky bomb uh the trap uh freaking powder burn all of these things are abilities yes the basic attacks um are pretty good amount of damage but we already going for fire damage so there's nothing we can do which fire damage will increase their damage of, of, of our basic attack and our sticky bomb and all the things but invigorated punishment you can probably change it for uh mortal empowerment if you feel like you're getting a lot of kills in oprs and stuff like that but it's completely up to you the champion ring is beautiful for this build the other thing that you could go for is fire damage and burning if you want your dots to last longer on the enemy or if you want your powder burn to last longer on the enemy it is completely and 100 percent up to you for the earring like i said i'm going to be using the endless thirst with nimble on it this is beautiful like i said the endless thirst is getting buff the fortification the empowering toast uh the cooldown is not going to get increased for season four so what you do is you put a focus potion on your bard and whenever you drink a focus potion then you will get the fortification you will get the empowerment as well uh we're going to be putting ruby on the gear just simply because uh i don't know ruby uh fire staff uh, there's no really any reason i just put ruby there because i if you're 100 con and you're playing a little bit further away from the melees but it's still you're going to be at the range of the explosive arrow you're still going to be at the range of the other fire staff uh, you know, a flamethrower, fireball. You probably don't want to get hit by those things. Although those things are rather hard to for you to avoid, especially if you're playing close to them. For the uh, for the hard rune, we're going to be using the brutal the brutal hard rune of the cannon blast. Insane amount of damage. You can use this in clumps. And the beauty about it is that the burn that it leaves behind is empowered by fire damage. So your fire damage ring and all of your fire harnessing and ignited on the gear, all of that is going to be empowered. It has a pretty good range, meaning that you can use a close, medium, or long range. You can even finish targets off if they're running away with the Brutal Cannon Blast. This is how it's going to be looking for the skill tree right here. We're not going to put the last point in Powder Burn. We're not going to put the last point on the Sticky Bomb. Uh, this is how it's uh, going to be looking for maximum damage and survivability for the Musket right here. For the Fire Staff, our traditional Flamethrower build with the Fireball. You guys know it, you guys love it, Not, nothing nothing changes uh, pretty much pretty much at all over here. We're still not going to be using Rune of Helios or Backdraft. Uh, pretty much dead, and this is how it's going to stick to it. 
so yeah this is uh this is the builds this is the hard room the gear the attributes now let me go ahead and show you guys a couple of uh, tips in uh, uh rotations and combination of abilities and then after that i will show you guys the clips that we have collected this week if you guys are still watching this far please do not forget to like the video sub to the channel please and thank you if uh you guys love it go ahead and share it with your friends anyways uh let's move on to the combos when it comes to combo the fire staff musket doesn't really have that that many combos that you can do together other than just playing around with the musket for the fire staff there's not really any combo because we're using fireball flamethrower and burnout you know you can always do the burnout into fireball into flamethrower but usually whenever the arena starts or whenever the fight starts you're probably gonna start with a fire staff out or maybe not maybe you want to start with a musket out this is what i've been doing lately i, I start with a musket out then i do a shot uh roll shoot and then they're gonna do like a roll in between those two and then after i do my two shots waiting for my cooldown from the next shot i proceed to do like a like a fireball or maybe like a burnout so sometimes uh, what I do is I start the fire with a shot, roll, shoot, then swap into the fire staff, do like a burnout into like a fireball. If I had it on cooldown, then into flamethrower and now I'm close to the enemy. You can do like a sticky bomb or you can do like a trap. But that is obviously if the, you know, if the fight uh, enables you to do that kind of thing. But let's talk about like actual combos, right? So one combo with a musket will be, um, will be trap into shoot, roll, shoot, right? That's going to be basically your bread and butter right there. It's going to be trap into shoot, roll, shoot. Obviously, if you have powder burn ready to go, you will send it with one of those two shots, right? Another one that you can do will be trap into a sticky grenade into roll, shoot, right? Something like that. That will work also a lot of the time, especially if the enemy has no freedom. If the enemy has no freedom, it's even better because that way they will sit on top of the trap for the entire time. And I love how a lot of people have been saying that freedom is always being a scam, that freedom doesn't really work. And let me tell you something. Whenever I fight somebody with this build and I hit them with one of their traps and they have no freedom, oh my God, I can dance around these people because you can do something that is like this. You can do a trap into a grenade, into another trap, into a shot, roll, shot. That way, that way the, 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 the two shots hit together with a grenade. The enemy's rooted in the place. The enemy's bleeding in place. And it's so beautiful. And a lot of the times, the, the enemy doesn't really know what's going on. So whenever you hit them with the first trap, they start like panic rolling. Don't worry about it. Just uh, whenever, whenever you hit them with a trap, if they have a lot of stamina and you're somewhat close to them, go ahead, hit them with a the trap throw the grenade then throw another trap then shoot roll shoot then into a fireball flamethrower right and that shit will pretty much finish everybody off if you get it with no stamina the the the, the grenade explosion with a two shot will pretty much kill anybody but in case that they still have hp then the fireball followed by the flamethrower it's beautiful to finish up any target uh so the arena usually when the arena starts what i do is I, I send a fireball and then I, I load the, the powder burn into it. And then I do like a shot, roll, shoot. And then I throw a grenade, try to get close in there, put down a trap. Flame them with a flamethrower, then try to put another trap. My shots are ready, roll, shoot, roll. Then hit them with a fireball, flamethrower, right? Flamethrower, obviously, whatever if the, whatever the fight dictates. Then another grenade, swap to the musket, shoot, roll, shoot. Uh, fire staff, flamethrower, then another trap. Or if you can keep... Uh, if you can simply keep pumping damage from afar because the enemy is further from you you don't need to close you don't need to close the gap let's say that you have two teammates fighting over there and the enemy team also has two teammates right there you don't need to immediately close the gap with a burnout unless you have to you can simply just you know slowly make your way there together with the traps and and reloading don't be afraid of reloading and also don't be afraid of if you have the tactical reload don't always waste it like if the enemy is right there and the enemy is moving it's sometimes better to shoot than reload and whenever you find the opportunity you will do the shot roll shot right because you don't want to waste that second shot it's way too valuable for you to waste it so if the enemy is like zigzagging jumping and stuff don't don't waste your tactical reload just keep shooting 
getting a little bit of distance keep shooting and if the enemy by any chance gets too close to you guess what remember what i told you guys about the gear and about the mobility and the movement and speed and stuff like that you can simply put a trap and just could doodle away look at this movement and speed obviously we don't have alacrity on the amulet and we don't have and, and we don't have the speedy boots so that movement and speed is going away rather rather fast but putting down one trap right now even without those speedy things you have an insane amount of movement and speed and on top of that you also have the burn out with combat speed on the fire staff that you can do some crazy things with it and yes guys this build is just incredibly fun a lot of burst a lot of sustained damage crazy utility with this trap like if you get one of the enemy healers right and you hit them with a trap and your teammate notice that because the trap is insane right the trap is ridiculously powerful it is a 20 percent rain on the trap is ridiculous and also another thing that a lot, a lot of people don't know is that the trap it heals you for a hundred percent of the damage done to an enemy that is trapped meaning if you're low hp and you use a trap on an enemy and then you shoot him roll shoot you will get healed by a hundred percent of that damage if you pull down a trap and you swap to the fire staff and you use a fireball and flamethrower guess what he will still heal you because you do not need to have the musket out for you to be able to heal to be healed by scent of blood this thing is ridiculous and this will be your bread and butter for sustain if you are fighting against an enemy and you're both kind of low and you see that he runs out of stamina you immediately pull down that trap hit him with a grenade another trap then you would shoot roll shoot and the grenade will also heal you because that is one of the things the mechanic has every hit of the sticky bomb heals you for 32 percent of the damage done right on the mechanic so 32 percent of the sticky bomb damage which by the way is one of the highest damage in the entire game unfortunately i cannot hit the dummies with the trap so i cannot rend them but you see that critical was over 10,000 damage and in pvp any light player gets hit on average anywhere from four to seven thousand damage on average five to six pretty much all the freaking time so you get healed for 30 percent of that now imagine 30 percent of the sticky bomb plus a hundred percent of all of the damage that you do with a sticky bomb so if you were to hit an enemy right and you hit him with a grenade the amount of damage that the amount of the amount of healing that you'll get is just astronomical is ridiculous i will show you guys some clips um and that is pretty much when it comes to rotations and, and combos uh, for the musket remember to use uh, traps into grenades into traps into shot into roll you know shoot roll shoot then swap to the fire staff do the flamethrower when the situation enables you or if the enemy is clumping up because remember that your fire staff should have play crits on them right so go in there with the flamethrower apply the anti heals to the enemy and just pump 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 with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video Go ahead and enjoy the clips and if you guys have any comment or any questions about this build or any suggestion or whatever crazy build you guys want me to do next either drop by the stream or leave a comment in the section below you guys have a phenomenal day and uh cheers connect to the grenade big damage big damage big damage he's there there you go we have another archer right here on the right side Heal me, heal me, thank you. Okay. Oh! And I just almost got one shot right there. Healer made a terrible mistake. This guy stole. I'm just too good, chat. I mean, what do you want me to do? Destroy.
Okay, miss both shot. A lot of damage there. Give me all my health back. Roll this. He's there. 